Hello and welcome to Ladies Talking Business on Plus TV Africa. I'm Morimi Akonwo, your host. Our guest on today's episode is a lawyer and a baker. She is the founding partner of Paracletus Legal Consult with over 10 years of legal experience. She has distinguished herself in the area of advocacy, debt recovery, banking and finance law, corporate governance, amongst others. She has both educational knowledge and professional experience in human resource management, especially in the area of learning and development. She is an associate member of the Chartered Institute of Personal Development in the UK. She is the founder of Whisks and Crumbs, a confectionery that produces delicious and savory treats with different cake flavors. Our guest is Tomilola Taiwo. Hi, Mami. Hello, Tomilala. Thanks so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. Okay, we're just going to go straight in. No problem. Tell us why or how Paracletus um, Legal is unique. What makes it unique? Okay, Paracletus Legal Consult is unique. Obviously, every, every law firm is unique in itself. Okay. Um, and what sets a law firm a, a law firm apart from every other law firm is what they their practice areas okay. um, their uh, method of their ways of working their professionalism um, I would say that's what set par sets Paracletus Legal Consult apart um, the practice areas which you have so clearly mentioned in your introduction um, also the level of work and effort the um, the standard of um, um, professionalism that's been attached to work when we do work um, at Paracletus Legal Consult. I think those are the things that set us apart as a whole as a law firm and the dedication of the employees, dedication of employees is very, very critical mm -hmm. um, and ensuring that we always, um, we're a law firm that takes emotional intelligence mm -hmm. in and out of the courtroom <laughs> very yes, seriously. Yeah. Um, I feel that's an area of law that suffers a lot. Um, or well not suffers a lot that is not given as much attention as it should be everywhere emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence. Has been ignored exactly it's not always outside of work you need it at work mm. we find that we need it in the courtroom we find that we need it dealing with staff um, so I mean those are the areas that I think make sets us apart and um, helps us thrive as a law firm <laughs> so where did the name come from Paracletus I'll just be honest, it wasn't really inspired by me, it was inspired by my mom, and okay. it was inspired from the Bible. Actually, I oh. think it means helper, Holy Spirit helper. Ah. So I think, yeah, that was where Paracletus from. came about, and I it's, mean, been, it's very unique. It is. <laughs> Everybody keeps it in Paracletus, Paracletus, I know different things, but here, here we are. <laughs> okay, so as a lady running, a young lady <laughs> running a law firm, what yes. has the experience been like for you? I mean, it's, I'm always open to a challenge. I started um, running Paracritus Legal Consult as the practice manager, um, managing partner actually, four years ago in 2017. And it's been challenging, but it's been a welcome challenge. It's pushed me to learn more, to learn from people. I've had to deal with people management. I've, I've had to deal with um, sourcing uh, briefs for the firm. I've had to deal with proper structure. It's been a learning experience. I've been able to put everything else in my professional experience into the law firm as the managing partner. But it's been, it's been a challenge, but a welcome one. So for you, was it like running a business or you just saw it as a profession? Because some people argue that law is a profession, not business. For me, I'll speak for myself. Law is a profession and a business. Why can't it okay. be both? It's a means of livelihood. You do make money from it. That's the whole purpose of having a business set up. But it's a professional business because you did go to school for this degree. Mm. You went to law school. You got your degrees. Mm -hmm. you, you graduated. Mm -hmm. And then you became a professional in the industry. So it's both a business and a profession for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what are some of the challenges that you have faced? Because I know you have faced <laughs> challenges. Can you tell us some key ones that made you at some point say, you know what, I'm done, or I think I'm going to be done soon? Okay, I mean, everybody has faced challenges. I think, you know, part of what makes me better as a managing partner is knowing that you, you have to be solution-driven as opposed to being, being moved by the situation at hand. Okay, right, this has happened, what do I do? But some of the challenges I faced, as a lawyer, I would say one, one would be um, uh, lawyer-client relationships. There is a very, there can be a very thin line sometimes in that regard where clients tend to cross over mm. and 
you know, in they what, don't know where in to... In what way? In what way? Okay, example. so let me give you an example, right? I have a client. I sat down, I've taken the time to explain to this person or that person, look, this is the situation, this is our strategy, which is what we always do. This is what we plan to do for your case. These are the possible outcomes. But you find clients that will always need that reassurance calling you every time. It becomes hard to manage your time effectively because time that you've, you know, set apart to do other things, you're repeating to yourself the same thing and, over and over. reassuring. So you're kind of like a counselor, a mentor, a, a lawyer, coach, a, a, lawyer, <laughs> a friend, yeah. all in one. So, I, I mean, that. that's one of, one, of, one of the challenges. I've also had challenges with staff. I mean, I think every business always has challenges with employees at some point. But I had to take the bull by the horns. I had to find the right staff to fit Paracletos Legal Consult. I had to seek professional help in doing that, like recruitment. I do have experience in human resources, but I felt like, look, you can't do everything. Mm. Managing partner, yes, but you cannot you do, can everything. do everything. True. You have to seek the proper True. help. So True. that's what I've done. Staffing issues, clients, relationships, those are always things. And billing, oh my God, mm -hmm. billing is such <laughs> a, it's such an issue. It used to be a very, very, it still is sometimes, but I've, I'm learning to manage that. So that's how to appropriately bill, bill your clients. clients. Not just appropriately bill them because it, where you even find difficulty in billing clients, there are apps that have been set up, legal apps that have been set up to guide you. You know, mm. you have guides, you can learn how to do that. But it's always harder to justify a service than a good. If you walk into a law firm, hmm. I'd be sorry, not a law firm. If you walk into a store, a supermarket, you see something on the shelf is 2,100 naira. You're going to carry the thing to the counter and, and pay, pay. 2,100 mm -hmm. naira. <laughs> but I went to school. I studied law. My parents put me through school. I'm telling you, this is your amount. This is your fee. This is your professional fee. There's, there's filing to consider. There's transport. There's logistics. There's so many things to consider. I've explained everything to you. But it's so difficult to justify a service. People find it easier to pay for goods with no services. questions. Do you before. think it's something that has to do with this part of the world or you think generally? I think it's this part of the world and it could also be, I've also learned that it could also be putting your foot down. I'm okay to say, okay, if you don't agree, that's fine because you have to know what you bring to the table. You know what the effort you're going to put in and the stress that it's going to take you. So if you've charged it appropriately and a client says no, it's okay if the client has to go somewhere else. Interesting, Tommy. <laughs> I can't wait for you to hear you know, more things you have to say, but we'll do that after the break. All right, so we will take a quick break now and be back for more talk with our guests. After the break, please stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. You are watching Ladies Talking Business on Plus TV Africa with our guest, Tomila Lattaiwo of Paracletus Legal. This is what I usually ask a lot of women. Right. Can you give an experience where a male voice has tried to silence you simply because you're female and maybe because you're young mm -hmm. in this profession? Okay, um, the way I see it, in every profession, you're going to meet different people. And mm. I don't think it should be gender-based. You okay. have issues, your issues with people shouldn't be gender-based. I've had women not. in the profession because I'm young and I am in my position, silence me as well, you know? Really? I've had that, but it's not, it's, I, I don't want to, to make any issues that I've had going along in this business gender-based. Yes, I've had issues from people. Let's put it that from way. From people. From people, men okay. and women alike. And I've dealt with them as emotionally intelligent as I could in the situation. And it's, it's worked for me so far. In terms of being specific, mm. you know, men, you know, being men, it, 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 it that really doesn't faze me because I don't see it as that. If you respond appropriately, then I think you should be fine. If you choose not to see something as a gender-based attack, Mm. It's not going to be a gender. So it's based all about attack. perspective, it's, how it's, you see. It. Exactly, exactly. That's that's the way I see it. Okay. <laughs> so as a boss lady <laughs> running a law firm, <laughs> so what what steps have you put in place to ensure profitability, to ensure that we are still in business? Like, give us some secrets. <laughs> right. So I mean, <laughs> in in the legal profession, I think it's common knowledge that we cannot solicit for work. We mm. cannot go and advertise our businesses. Nobody sees a lawyer saying, oh, I'm a lawyer, come to my, nobody does that. We're not allowed, legally allowed or professionally allowed to do that. Mm. So that's out of the way, any sort of marketing or advertisement or anything like that. However, I think with, with, with lawyers, 
the way to, to get business, the way to stay profitable is to be in the right rooms. You have to leverage that power of networking. You can't sit mm. in your office and expect that briefs are going to come your way. You have to be out there. So go out for go events. Go out there for events, for, I mean, sensible events. You know, That's profitable events, not just like, you know, Any you have to be very event. strategic where you okay. go to. You have mm -hmm. to, you know, be around the right people, the right women, think with the, thinking along the same lines or men and women alike. Um, you have to also, uh, you know, it's also about doing your research as to what's going on. There are many platforms out there where mm. lawyers can have their voices heard, where you can meet people, you meet CEOs, you meet MDs or small SMEs mm. and big SMEs alike. You have to find... So just find the right find one. Find the right places, leverage on your networking skills and push to network, to meet people. To so networking is key, is basically. Key. That's that has one. worked for you, right? Yes, networking. Two, the, your work speaks for you. Where you cannot advertise, your clients will advertise for you. So um, I'll give an example. I didn't really start off taking on a lot of matrimonial courses. Like when I say matrimonial courses, like divorce petitions and helping women through divorce petitions and men alike. Um, I didn't start that way. But I, before I knew it, I started with one and then the other and then the yeah. other. And then it's kind of like a niche for me now oh. in that field. But this was all based on referrals from clients, mm. from friends and from people. So um, your work your speaks work for, speak you, for you mm -hmm. and your networking skills, I think, are, are, those are, those are two key, key things <laughs> you need to harness. So I, in your bio, I read that you do a lot in the maritime and um, okay. shipping space. Yes. So is that a lucrative aspect in law? Okay, so I'll say this. I used to do a lot in the maritime and the shipping okay. space. Of recent, I haven't. When I first, you know, came out fresh, of, graduated from law school, and I got my law degree. I worked with um, Babadidi Koko and Co. SAN, okay. and he's also, he's, a, he's very well, well versed, knowledgeable in the shipping and admiralty field of law. And that was where I started that. Is it a lucrative business or aspect of law? Yeah, I would say. I would say it is, and just leave it there. I just leave it there. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, as someone who was, someone who's running or who has been running a law firm for like four years, yes. Um, what lessons have you learned, especially running it in Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> that was a deep sigh. <laughs> <laughs> what lessons have I learned? Um, you you cannot be discouraged for one moment as the managing partner. Sometimes it's lonely at the top. It's mm. lonely at the top. It's only when you're the only one making decisions or you don't have a partner to bounce things off. I do have friends. I do have colleagues who run their own law firms. So I do bounce things off them. But you should always never be afraid to ask for help from people. Do you understand? You have to keep your energy level up because you find that your energy level mm -hmm. is your, your, your staff and your employees take on the same energy that you take on within your law firm. Mm. So you can't expect to be on two and expect them to be on ten. They are looking up to you. To you. So um, those are things that you have to consider. What else have I learned? You have to be very strategic. You have to have a plan um, you know, in how you approach your work and your day. You have to learn uh, to sacrifice. Sacrifice. <laughs> yes, you have to mm. learn to sacrifice. There's some sac sacrifices you have to make as the manager. There are some times where you have to deny yourself certain things so that you can keep the firm going, keep the work going keep the office going so yeah those are the interesting I, I believe nigeria will make you learn lots oh, of lessons Lord. patience <laughs> damn <Stand> prompt <laughs> emotional intelligence yes <laughs> we're still here we're still thriving we're still trying and hoping for the best for the future oh well we wish you the best <laughs> okay so we'll just take another quick break now and be back for and more no talk problem. after that mm -hmm. we will take a second break now and we will be back for more talk with our guest after the break please stay with us You are still watching Ladies Talking Business on Plus TV Africa. So far, we have been speaking with our guest, Tomilola Taiwo, a lawyer and entrepreneur. So, Tomilola, very recently we got, um, I like to say, invaded <laughs> by something we all did not plan for, right. the outbreak of COVID-19. Yeah. How... So basically, because of COVID-19, a lot of us had to, everybody had to embrace technology, whether yeah. you wanted it or not. Yeah. So tell us about some of the 
impact technology has made on your business running the firm? I mean, when you, <laughs> okay, <laughs> when you don't have a choice, really, you have to get with the program. You have to find what works. Like I said, everything, when you f you're faced with an issue, you have to learn as the managing partner or someone who is in a managerial position, you have to have a solution-driven approach to everything, you know. COVID-19 happened. It affected everybody. There were law firms or businesses who already had a work from home policy, you know, set up. So they already knew what to do. Mm. We are a full service litigation law firm. We did not have or envision or hope for, I did not want a work from home policy. Nine to five, Monday to Friday, have your weekends to yourself. That's what I really think work should be. But when COVID, the outbreak came, we still had to keep up with our cases. We still had to follow up in courts. We still had to update clients, but we had to do it from the confines of our homes. So what did we do? Zoom, Microsoft meetings, yeah. emails, you know, uh, WhatsApp calls. What, what would you call it? So you had it, to just embrace you it. You had to embrace it. You had no choice. So yes, technology made a huge impact, affected <laughs> our business, but also provided the so, solution. So yeah, I was going to say that. So was it a good thing or a bad thing? Was it, so did it do more good than harm or more harm than good? Okay, I would say it did. I would say it was half and half. Let me put it this way. It was bad because we were learning to work from home where a policy was not already set up for that. Mm. Okay, so as with um, um, organizational change happens, it can have a good impact, it can have a bad impact. Employees could struggle with it a little bit. They struggled a bit. But it was good because it did provide a solution. This was our only solution. Mm. So they were forced to pick up new skills. They were forced to understand how to work from home, how to use the assistance, how to connect to Zoom, how to um, um, create meetings, mm -hmm. how to schedule things with clients. They had to do it. They didn't have a choice. So, yeah. Oh, well. So, so, so far, have you been um, embracing it more? Have you been doing the same thing or you've gone back to your... Right. So, I would say it's, it's kind of like half and half. Okay. So, when we came back, we didn't come back fully. When the uh, lockdown was over, I think sometime in June or July, and everybody was beginning to pick up again their businesses where, you know, COVID had left them. We went back. We, we were first doing once a week. So we were okay. still on the work from home policy. We're still doing that. Then we moved to three times a week. So obviously the two days where you're at home, you're still working, you know? Mm -hmm. And then we're now at four, four days a week. Okay. Next year to start fully. fully. So we hopefully, we, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> so we eased ourselves into it. Mm. I always, I always thrive on easing people into things and things. not throwing things at well, them because they need to way. adjust. Mm -hmm. So we eased ourselves and it's worked. Are we still embracing the technology? Yes, we are, but not obviously as much because our um, litigation is very it's face to face. Now. Basically, you have to be yeah. right in front of the person to do your work. So. You can't really rely on that. The, the, the courts were even looking at doing like a virtual, like a virtual judgment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I read but like everybody that. was like, no, that's not, not going to work. work. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we've, so, we've embraced it. Great, great. Well done. Mm. I want us to move now to the savory and sweet meat <laughs> <laughs> of your business. Right. Okay. So, you are also a baker. Yes. And the name of the outfit is Whisks and Crumbs. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about it. Ah, whisk and crumbs. That's like my baby project. It okay. came, it didn't even start off as a business. Honestly, it started off as a hobby. When I was uh, in, in the UK, I was living there just before I started running Parkless Legal Consult. And I found that times when I didn't want to go out, I just wanted to be at home and learn something. So I started baking and I really enjoyed it. So I took a few classes and I really enjoyed it. I'm like, oh, I really like this. And when I came back to Nigeria, I thought to myself, look, I don't want to let go of this. This is something that I enjoy and I can make money from, from something me. that I enjoy doing. So mm. my passion drove me. And when I came back to Nigeria, I just started doing it. And As a business. We're here now. <laughs> yeah, tell us about some of your flavors, some of the treats, some of the things you do. Okay, great. So when we started Whisk and Crumbs, I started thinking that I was just going to do like gourmet cupcakes, very unique cupcakes with feelings, different designs, just to give myself that niche in the market, you know, that kind of thing. But I, I decided, look, I don't have to tailor myself to one thing. So I moved, I took classes when I came back 
from dainty, dainty affairs, from ah. honey frostings, from I love desserts. I always believe that every year do something to upskill yourself. So, so mm -hmm. I, said, I said last year that I was going to do something upskill myself and I, um, I started doing cupcakes. From there I moved to celebration cakes and then tall cakes, decorating cakes. And then I moved to savory treats like, like cinnamon rolls. And then when I took my dessert classes, I moved on to desserts and I offer that you know. So we can get all of that if we go into all of that. If go into risk and <laughs> okay, crumbs. so but what makes the business unique? Because there are thousands of bakers in Lagos. I'm not even yes. going to say Nigeria yes. in Lagos today. So what makes you stand out? Right. What makes whisk and crumb stand out? I think one, it would be the flavors and what we offer. I think it's different. Every I've noticed and I realized that I've had different cakes from different bakers that I admire and love and aspire to be like, like honey frostings and Levi's twist and so on and so forth. And I find that every baker has a unique taste or has a unique way of doing their things or a unique offering. Salt Lagos does. So what makes whisk and crumbs different would be our flavors. It will be the flavors we offer. We try to do unique, funky flavors. Not just coconut, maybe turn it to pina colada. Not just mm. chocolate, maybe okay. add some mousse okay, in Okay, now there. you're getting me really, really <laughs> hungry for that. <laughs> but how have you been able to juggle law, which is a very serious profession, and business, um, plus baking? How have you been able to juggle both? <laughs> It's, this, it's a very sensitive to topic for me, this particular th uh, question you've asked me, because it's something that I'm still dealing with, and I'm still learning how to juggle. But I've realized that there, there are certain things that have helped me along. I have to be disciplined. If I have to wake up at five to do certain things, I have to wake up at five to do certain things so that I can get dressed, get to the office, or court, come, and you know. So effective time management, discipline, mm. planning. Yeah. Do not underestimate the power of writing your to-do list the day before. before. Okay. And as you tick them off, honestly, you get a satisfying feeling that you are achieving your goals as you move on. So I'll say those are the things that have helped me along. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. I'm, I've deprived myself of sleep sometimes, but it's, it is what it is, and it's the, the sacrifice we have to make okay. for the business. So you run a law firm, and... Um, let me call it a bakery. Mm -hmm. Yes, you run both. Mm -hmm. Has Forex affected your business in any way? Because lately, <laughs> dollar, pounds, they've gone from, in fact, it's like they're on another mm. level now. So how have you been able to manage that, both for law and the bakery? It's, it's ridiculous. Um, Forex has, has affected everybody. I, I, I try not to, you know, uh, confine the issues to just myself. It's everybody. It's a general issue, this economic issue, it's a general thing. It's affected everybody. So how have I adjusted? I've had to adjust some of my prices. Do you understand? Oh. I think everybody has. So you have to bring it lower or higher? <laughs> I've had to adjust some of my prices just a little bit. I mean, to accommodate the changes. Because when Forex went up, then the prices of things went up. Butter mm -hmm. went up. I don't, I don't hold back on the ingredients. I don't use substandard stuff. I use good quality things because I want my, my cakes to taste nice and different. And good quality comes with a lot of money. You have to pay money for it. Mm -hmm. And you have to charge appropriately or else you'll be selling your cakes for free. And <laughs> you don't want that. Yeah. So I've had to adjust, um, adjust that. I've had to, if necessary, find alternatives. Mm -hmm. you know suitable alternatives. suitable alternatives that would still work perfectly in certain situations maybe change a recipe that would require something that is very expensive not to something substandard but something that is just as nice that's that's what i've i've done and that's how i've managed the business so far well well done i hope to taste <laughs> some of whisks and crumbs and someday will. and you will <laughs> thank you and thanks for joining us on the show today Tomilala. we wish you the very very best thank you very much for having me Marami. you're welcome really it. you're God welcome bless. so thank you for watching this episode of ladies talking business with Tomilala taiwo on plus tv africa i hope to see you next week for another episode i am morimi akonwo goodbye <laughs>